By the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to know the name of any note on your bass, and that's going to lead you down the path of being able to play anywhere on the fretboard. Let's start off with a 30 second explanation of a piano keyboard. All the white notes are called the natural notes, and if you start on A, you've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now that is the musical alphabet, just goes to G. Have a look at the B and the C and the E and the F. They're the only two white notes that don't have a black note in between them, okay? This is absolutely crucial to know this. Those black notes are the sharps and the flats, more on that later. Let's go back to your bass, let's go to A. Now those are all those natural notes, the white ones, on the A string, going across A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now notice that the B to the C and the E to the F are a half step. That half step is the equivalent on a piano of a white to a black note. That's a half step, okay? And B and C and E and F are the only places on the bass where that happens, where there are two natural notes that are a half step apart. Otherwise, it's a whole step apart all the way for natural notes. So look, A to B, whole step. B to C, there's that half step. C to D, whole step. D to E, same. E to F, half step. F to G, whole step. G to A, whole step. So the first thing you need to do is just to understand that notes are named because of the piano. You've got the alphabet. A to A again is just A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Those are the natural notes. And then anywhere you are on your bass, you need to know that just B to C and E and F are the only points where you've got this sort of Jaws theme tune half step going on. Otherwise, it is whole steps all the way. Now those gaps in between the notes are important. They're sharps. So if you take any note, let's go C. This is the fifth fret of the G string. There's C to D, there's that whole step. Now, if you're on C and you go up one fret, remember up for musicians, up in pitch. So this is up, and that's down. That's crucial to know. Okay, so C, go up one fret, and you have a C sharp, okay? So that's a C, and that's a C sharp. Go to the D now. If you go, one fret higher than D, you'll get a D sharp. But if you get one fret, if you go one fret lower than D, that is a flat. So that same C sharp that we played from earlier is also called a D flat. That's called an enharmonic equivalent, and it's just something that you need to know. You can get one of these natural notes and flatten it or sharpen it. That's a D, D flat, D sharp. That works. For any note. Now luckily for us bass players we have patterns to fall back on. So a great pattern is an octave. So let's go to G on the third fret of the E string. If you go two frets higher, remember higher is this way, and two strings down towards the floor, you have an octave. They're both the same name. So if you know that this note is a G, then you know that this note is also a G. What's the note after a G in the musical alphabet? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We kind of reset to go back to A. It's A. And remember from before when I told you that every note is a whole step, every natural note, so that's no sharps, no flats, is a whole step. Apart from when we get to B. It's a B to C there. C to D. D to E. And so on. So you've got to get that pattern. Another good pattern to know is just the tuning of the bass. E, A, D, G. Those are tuned fourths apart, like E, F, G, A. That's a fourth, okay? A to D, four. D to G, four. So it's like this, look. E, A, D, G. Well, if you find an E here, same again. E, A, D, E, A, E, A, D, G. This same pattern works. You'll find that anywhere. Look, C to an E. Everything 
thing I just played there was a C and an E in exactly the same position relative to it. That's the beauty of the bass. Then you want to learn these three beacons, I'm calling them. A beacon is like a guiding light. It's somewhere that you, you can reassure yourself you know where it is. On the bass, we have three of those points. Point number one is the open strings. So E, A, D, G. If you need a method to learn it, every Alsatian dog growls, E-A-D-G. Make sure you know that, that's a non-negotiable, it's one of these things you just have to learn. The second point, really easy, it's the same. It's where you have the double dot on your bass, that's an octave away from the open string, it's the same notes. The third beacon, the third shining light for you has got to be your fifth fret, and again, the second dot marker on most basses anyway, is the fifth fret. So don't count up one, two, three, four, five. Just know there's the fifth fret there. And why that's important is that if you play it on the E string, it's the same as the open string next to it. Therefore, this one here is an A, this one here is a D, this one here is a G. Remember the fourths pattern before? Well, that to that is a fourth as well. So G, A, B, C. You're going to find so many patterns within patterns to help you learn all these notes. So I'm going to shout out some random notes now. Pause after each time if you want to find it quickly, but I'm going to go through my thought processes here. Okay, so I'm going to find a G on the A string. Okay, what I did there was I know that it's the A string and that if we go from the A, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, the G is going to be somewhere up here, but I don't need to go from down here, go from one of my beacons here, the A here, and I just know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. In the musical alphabet, they're right next to each other. I go down a whole tone and I find my, find my G. What about G sharp? Easy, upper fret. There's another one, octave, here. Let's stay here. Let's play a, well, let's go on the G string and let's do a C. So, G, A, B, C. Well, I mean, it's one of my fifth fret notes anyway. Let's do a couple more. So, if I'm on the E string and I want to find an F, well, that's easy because I'm thinking E, F, right, right next door to each other, plus it's one of those ones on the piano, E to F. Now, I learnt the piano, so I know that really, really well. If you've never played a piano in your life, well, yes, that's going to be a, a bit like an extra level of something you have to learn. Just one of those things. It does explain, however, why E to F and B to C are like that, are, are half steps. It does explain that, so that's why I recommend you know that. What about F sharp on the D string? Well, look, there's the F, there's the octave higher. Sharpen a note, you go this way by one. Bang, there's F sharp. Here's a good exercise to find any note on the bass. Let's start with F sharp. It couldn't be easier. So look, that's an octave pattern. So we found the F sharp. It couldn't be easier if you know one note. So there's the F sharp. So an octave away from that, nice and easy. Here's a good pattern to know on a bass. If you're playing a note on the D string and you want to find that same pitched note on the A string, just drop down and go across one, two, three, four, five. So as I'm doing this, kind of looking across, there's another octave pattern. That is the same as that up the octave. So remember how this is an E string. Double dot is an E again. So if F sharp is two frets higher than E, the same is going to be the case here. So F sharps really easily. You should be able to do that on any note. And do that. So practice this for five minutes every day. Just take octaves, G. And then you've got. And the fact that G is one whole tone below A. So you're just gonna get these connections the more that you do them. Once you get really good, you can set a metronome and try to find notes on every beat of the metronome. Another exercise is to start on any string and play all the natural notes across it. So let's do E. So we're gonna go E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And 
it's easy because I know the alphabet. So E, F, G, musical one, because you stop at G and start again at A. I know that, and then I know that thing from before. B to C, E to F, those are the ones that it's jaws, the half step. Otherwise, it's whole steps the whole way. So E, F, G, A, B, there's that bit there, and then to E. You can carry on. Go downwards. Just call them out as you go and you'll be associating them to the different points on the fretboard. One last exercise is to learn a scale, so C major. And a scale works very similarly to how we were doing the alphabet, just go up an alphabet. In this case, it's just C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So as you're playing, call out the name of the note and you'll be associating those names of the notes with where you're playing. A natural minor is another good one because it's A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And you call them out as you play and you look at the fretboard and you'll be learning it as you go. The main thing to say about a bass is that when you first start it and you don't know the names of the notes, it looks overwhelming. But what happens, and this is a point that you'll know about this when it happens, no one else will be able to tell you when this point happens, but you start to make order from the chaos of the fretboard in terms of octave patterns. There's a G, so there's an, there's an A. That means this next one's a B, B to C. That's that thing I was telling you about before. Loads of bass players know down here, and maybe up here, but not really here. There's no difference. The whole thing is all exactly the same. The, the patterns, the fourths, the, the distances between all notes is the same, and you need to get that. You will by practicing some of these things every day. If you have any questions whatsoever, let me know. Let's actually make some music with those notes. This lesson here is gonna help you. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.